What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be covering super detailed every single change that they made for Season 5 Reloaded, all the damage changes. We're going to look at TTK charts and show the actual impacts that the, the patch had on all these different weapons. As always, this video was available two days earlier to True Game Data Premium subscribers, so it's in the sidebar on True Game Data. If you are subscribed, you can see these videos two days early. There's an email notification system, so if you subscribe to those emails, you'll, be get, you'll get notified via email when I release one of the videos early. And also you get access to all the other True Game Data Premium features, so like the advanced TTK charts, the recoil plots, the aim sway, meta gen, the best stat lookup tool, everything. Just wanted to remind you guys that uh, you get all those tools for $5 a month on TGD. But let's get back into it and we will go over all of these weapon changes. All right, so starting out with Chimera here, it says close damage range in your close damage increased, bar damage increased, headshot multiplier increased, and lower torso damage multiplier increased. So you can see in the first damage range here, uh, zero meters for headshot, we get plus three, and then everywhere else, everywhere else is plus one. In the second damage range at 23.7 uh, to 33 meters, we have just plus one on the headshot, plus one on the stomach shot. And 32.8 to 44.9 meters, we have 21, point, 21 up to 22 damage, so just plus one damage on the stomach. And then in the last damage range, significantly increased here, so plus two to the head and then plus one everywhere else. Go look at the TTK chart and see how this actually impacts the uh, time to kill. All right, so we're going to go through all the shot locations individually. Headshot, no change to time to kill. Next shot, uh, better time to kill out at range. Looks like one shot faster at long ranges. Chest, same as the neck, so just long ranges. Stomach, in the every single damage drop off except the first, we have a faster time to kill by one shot. Extremities, faster in the first range and the last range. And then if we look at combination, it doesn't actually change the time to kill in terms of combination shot location with the default percentages on TGD. Obviously, if you adjust these percentages for your own liking, then in some cases it will affect those. If we look at the actual co combination DPS, though, you can see that these damage changes are reflected here. So it's about 20 extra damage per second in the first range, a little bit extra in the mid range, and then about 20 again in the last damage range. Next up, we have the FR Avancer. So this was close damage increased and far damage increased. First damage range here, you can see it's plus one damage in all the drop offs. Second damage, or just the last damage range, I didn't, the, the middle ones didn't change. This is just the last damage range here. Also plus one damage in all those drop offs. So let's go look at the time to kill chart and see if this impacted things there. All right, going through this individually, faster time to kill in the last range on headshots for the new buffed Avancer. Neck, faster time to kill in the first and last damage ranges. Chest will be the same as neck. Stomach, same as chest as well. And then extremities is faster in the last damage drop off. So this is pretty significant. If we look at combination, you're going to see that it has a very good time to kill in that first 30 meters now, down at 715 milliseconds, and then also it got a buff at the maximum damage range, which is really nice. It's going to be a really nice buff for the Advancer overall. On to the ISO Hemlock, so the changes here were just damage range changes. You can see that the old ranges got reduced slightly, so minus 1.3 meters in the third on the third damage drop-off, and minus 1 meter on the fourth damage drop-off, so a very... Insignificant change there. The hemlock is basically the exact same weapon as before. On to the Lockman 556. So it says that head damage multiplier was increased, neck damage multiplier increased, upper torso damage multiplier increased. So neck, head, and uh, chest should all be buffed, but you can see in the first damage range the change in multipliers didn't result in a change in damage. In the second damage range, we got plus one damage to the head. In uh, the third damage range, from 44.7 to uh, 55.9, there were no changes, and then from 59, 55.9 and on, just the chest got buffed. So really, really small differences here. Go check it out on the TTK charts and see if it changes anything. I've got Lockman 556 and the pre-season 5 reloaded Lockman 556 on the chart. Head, no differences. Neck, you get a slightly better time to kill in the last damage range. Chest, same as neck, so slightly better TTK in the last damage range. With the default shot location percentages on TGD on combination, you don't get any change in time to kill. Um, but again, if we look at DPS, you'll see those changes show up here. So slightly faster damage per second in that mid range and then slightly faster damage per second in the, in the final range. So a little bit of a buff doesn't really change the gun much at all, but just a slight buff to the, the 556. Now for the M13B, it says all damage multipliers increased. So that's a very large buff there, obviously in the first damage range, one extra damage to all shot locations. 
Second damage range, also one damage to all shot locations. Third, same, and fourth, same. So it basically just got one extra damage on every single damage it does across every range and every shot location. So let's look at the time to kill chart and see how this how this looks. All right, looking at TTKs first. So headshot, no changes. Neck, uh, neck shot got one better shot to kill, which means the time to kill is one shot better out in anything past the first damage range. Chest is the same as neck. Stomach's the same. Upper arm and the extremities actually are better everywhere. So in every damage range, extremities are now one shot faster to kill, which is very nice. So if we look at combination here, it doesn't actually impact the combination TTK with the default shot location percentages on TGD in the first range or the second range. Um, but anything past 38 meters does have one less shot to kill now. So that will make your TTK uh, a little bit better there. So if we look at DPS, you're going to see that everywhere that the DPS was increased significantly. So the reason we look at DPS sometimes is because there's going to be situations where the target isn't 250 health or isn't exactly 300 health. They might have half a plate. They might be, you know, they might be two plates. They might be one plate. So DPS gives you a more generalized idea of performance than time to kill. Time to kill is very specific for that health value that you're shooting someone and dps kind of can give you more of a you know just any situation it gives you an idea of the performance in a rough estimation ttk is better for precise situations dps is better for just getting a general idea of how the weapon's going to perform so that's why i still like to look at it in situations like this m13c got a nice buff as well increased close damage increased mid damage and all location damage multipliers are increased so i didn't have this on tgd before season 5 reloaded so i don't have the pre and post but what I'm going to do is just show you guys what this looks like on the TTK chart compared to um, the M13B, just so you can get an idea for this. So let's add it here. Go up, add the M13C, come back down to the time to kill chart, and just look at it in combination compared to uh, the M13B. So TTK, 300 health. You see the M13C has very low bullet velocity compared to the other ARs, but it has really good time to kill. So 640. Uh, this could be a really competitive sniper support now. It's going to be one of the better sniper supports. And if it had better bullet velocity, it would be a contender for long range as well. So if you turn off bullet travel time, you can see that it has pretty competitive time to kill, even with the M13B um, out there. But, you know, in general, the bullet velocity is going to be pretty important for mid to long range engagements. And it has not the best recoil in the world. So mostly just going to be a sniper support and potentially uh, more of an SMG sort of weapon than the uh, M13B or any of the other ARs. The M4 had a slight change, just increased to the damage ranges. So the first damage drop off was increased by 0.9 meters. Second damage drop off increased by 1.3 meters. Just a little, little buff there. The STB got a headshot damage multiplier increase. So plus two damage in the first damage range, plus one damage in the second damage range, plus one in the third, and plus one in the fourth. So just a little headshot buff there. That doesn't impact the uh, time to kill as far as the combination percentage is concerned, but there will be some scenarios where that is gonna reduce that time to kill in a fight. So, small small buff, but a little bit of a buff still. Tempest Razorback got a slight damage range buff, so you can see uh, before the patch it was 28.2 up to 29.5, so plus 1.3 meters in the first, at uh, the first drop off, second drop off, plus 0 0.8 meters. So just a little buff there for the Razorback. Burn and Squall got hit with a, a bunch of changes. It's been pretty much the meta, since it came out or close to the meta. We got headshot damage multiplier decrease, neck multiplier decreased, chest multiplier decreased, torso, lower torso, so stomach multiplier decreased, and then extremities decreased. So in the first range, minus one damage uh, to the head, minus two to the neck and chest, and then minus one to stomach and extremities. Second damage range, we have minus one everywhere. Third damage range, same pattern as the first damage damage range. So minus one head, minus two to neck and chest, and then minus one everywhere else. And then in the last, we have the same as the previous one. Uh, minus one to the head, minus two to the uh, neck and chest, and then minus one everywhere else. ETK comparisons here. Headshot, it got two shots worse to kill in the last damage range with this patch. One shot worse to kill on the neck in the second to last damage range and the last damage range. Chest shots are the same as neck. Stomach, it's actually one shot to kill slower up close as well now. And then extremities, same as stomach. And combination here, we're going to see that it doesn't actually change out at range. Uh, but that's just the, def again, that's just the default shot location percentages on TGD. If you change those percentages, 
then this could come out differently. And there is a difference in DPS, which we'll look at in a second. But it is one shot to kill slower on combination in that first damage range out to about 31 meters. If you look at DPS here, you're going to see that there's a, been a pretty dramatic about 20 DPS uh, nerf to all the different damage ranges. So pretty significant nerf to the Cronin Squall here in Season 5 Reloaded. All right, so for the RPK, the close to mid damage was decreased, close damage range decreased, and then the headshot multiplier was increased. So in the first damage range, we have plus one damage to the head. You can see down here that we have minus 1.4 meters for that first damage drop off. So not a huge change there, about 5% reduction in damage range for that first drop off. And then in the first damage range, or the second damage range from 28.2 to 35.6, which is now 26.8, to 35.6, minus one to the head, minus two to the chest and neck, and then minus one to extremities. And then no changes in the next range and no changes in the final range. So basically just made it less effective up close. Anything inside uh, 26.8 meters, well, 28.2 meters, I guess, if you consider the drop off, it's gonna be much less effective now than it was before. And the only place where that headshot damage was, was changed was the first damage range. All right, so here we've got the TTK comparison for the RPK pre and post season five reloaded. Current RPK is in red. You can see that it's a, about one shot to kill worse in that first damage range on combination. And then if we look at DPS real fast, you'll see the same thing. Uh, just a slight change in combination DPS in the first damage range, but that little change was enough to get the damage values to right at the point where they changed the uh, the actual time to kill of the weapon. Then you can see that damage range change here, just a little 1.4 meters. Uh, shorter damage range as well as a significant change in the DPS. So there's quite a bit of different in, difference in DPS there for the RPK from 26.8 up to 35.6 meters. Then past that it's exactly the same. For the Sokken MG38 we got a little nerf. So neck, da neck damage multiplier decreased, chest damage multiplier decreased, and extremities multiplier decreased. So in the first damage range minus one to neck and chest. Second damage range minus one to neck and chest. And then the last damage range, minus one to extremities in, as far as damage. So let's go look at the time to kill, see if this affects anything. This video took a bunch of time to create to get all the information presentable in a way that was easy to digest and go through quickly, as well as getting the website updated and all the work that goes into the website. If you guys appreciate all that work, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Drop a like on the video, drop a comment on the video, help out with the algorithm. Let's get back to it though for the Sokken MG38. Looking at headshot TTK, neck shot TTK, chest, stomach, upper arm, lower arm. The only thing that changes is extremities in the last damage drop off. So that changed from 25 down to 24 damage. That's going to add a shot to kill because obviously 25 damage goes 300 divided by 25 is perfectly even. But 300 divided by 24 is not, which means it's going to take an extra shot to kill. If we look at combination, we're not going to see any difference there. But if we look at the actual combination DPS, you're going to see that there's been a slight decrease in DPS in all damage ranges. So in certain situations, it will kill a little bit slower than it did before. For the Bass P, this has been kind of a bad weapon since the day it came out. We got a big buff to it in this, this patch. So neck damage multipliers increased, chest, stomach, and extremities all increased in damage. And it already had really crazy long damage ranges. So now we have plus one to neck, chest, and stomach, and then plus two to the extremities in the first damage range plus one to everything except headshot in the second damage range, plus one to everything except headshot in the third damage range, plus one in the fourth, and plus one in the fifth. So in, at every damage range, we got increased damage to the body. Headshot didn't really change, but everything else got a nice little buff. So let's go look at the time to kill chart and see if this Bass P might actually be somewhat competitive now. All right, looking at the Bass P, headshot doesn't change. Next shot, we get better time to kill and 30 plus meter ranges, chest, same as neck, stomach, same, upper arm, upper arm, so extremities, all the different extremities, upper arm, lower arm, upper leg, lower leg, those are all going to be one shot to kill faster now at every damage range. So that's a pretty nice little buff there. If we look at the actual combination, we're going to see that as far as the default shot location percentages go on TGD, the time to kill was only reduced past that first damage range. So you still get 700 in the first damage range, uh, but everything past that got a nice little buff. We change it to DPS though, you're going to see that the DPS was increased in that first damage range as well. It's just that it didn't line up with a uh, time to kill reduction uh, for that quantized health value of 300. So 
Nice buff here. It's still not going to be a super competitive SMG, but that 19 meter damage range is pretty crazy. So I expect this to be a very competitive sniper support. I am working on the sniper support meta gen right now. So uh, this will definitely be included in that, obviously, and we'll see how it all compares uh, when I get that finished. But it's looking like it might be a really good sniper support. So for the Fennec 45, for some reason, I missed this when I was making the changes to TGD. So we only have what's changed. I don't actually have the TTK to compare it, and I don't have the, the images from True Game Data to compare it. So it says neck damage multiplier increased and upper torso damage multiplier increased. Those are the same. So I only need to look at one damage value. So neck and chest damage change in the first range was plus two, second range plus two, third range no change, uh, fourth range plus one, and then fifth range plus two. Since I can't show you a TTK chart of before and after, I wanted to show shots to kill changes. So if you did all chest shots, this is minus one shot to kill in the first, second damage range, and then nothing obviously in the third. The fourth is also minus one shot to kill, and then out in the last damage range, it's minus two shots to kill actually. So a nice little buff to the Fennec. It's still not going to be super competitive, I don't think, but they're kind of trying to sneak it back to being at least a semi-viable option as it was early on. On to the Vel 46. So this was just an extremities damage multiplier increase. So in the first damage range here, plus one damage to extremities. And then if I remember correctly, yeah, every every other damage range for the Vel didn't change at all. So it's really just the at first first damage range. So as I just showed, nothing except extremities changed. Uh, the extremities TTK was reduced by one shot, so it's down to 756 now from 819. If you look at combination, you're going to see that it didn't actually change the combination time to kill on TGD. It just makes it more likely uh, to get a better time to kill than you would have before. So let's look at DPS again so you can see that there was a slight, slight increase in the damage per second output. In Season 5 Reloaded, it was already a very competitive SMG. This kind of just gives it a little bit of a buff. Now it's going to be just a tiny bit better. So we'll see how it fits in, but it's looking like it's going to be another very good pick, just like it was in Season 5. All right, guys, that's it for the video. I tried to kind of up the presentation quality of this video compared to my some of my other ones. A lot of the time I'm just going through the website and stuff, so I wanted to try to make this a little clearer. It took me all day to make this video, which was unfortunate. I'm going to have to find a way to efficient about increasing the quality of my videos i'm really trying to get back into youtube and uh you know just really get focused on everything before modern warfare 3 releases so we can be prepared to uh do the best we can for that game but if you guys appreciate the content don't forget to drop a sub a like on the video a comment on the video and as always this video was available two days earlier to tgd premium subscribers you get the videos early as well as all of the other 10 or 15 premium features that we've developed at this point. So if you're interested in that, just go to True Game Data, go to the membership page. Uh, the videos are in the side. And uh, that's it, though. I just wanted to show all the changes in detail since we don't really get the detailed patch changes anymore uh, posted by the company themselves. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you guys all in the next one.